from an industry perspective, I mean, how do you feel about the changes in regulations? Are they working? Are banks safer? Well, first, Senator, um, just to be clear, your regulatory and policy focus now is just movies and no longer me. So um, <laughs> and I, we're happy you're enjoying that there. But to be, to be fair, the, the, um, the changes were substantial. Uh, the industry is fundamentally transformed, and it's transformed, I would say, for the better. And the senator delineated the items. We have more capital. We have more liquidity. We have capital stress tests and liquidity stress tests. Mm -hmm. We have the change in activities. We have more resources behind risk and risk analytics. We have higher um, teams across the country on compliance. So you can go line item by line item. I think the senator did a fantastic job really delineating how fundamentally the industry has transformed. And I completely agree when you go through the pain of 2008, we had to transform. Some transformed kicking and screaming, but we transformed. And so it's a fundamentally different place today than we were in 2008. To me, what's most concerning, therefore, is w what are the early signs of potential risk that could become that next problem as we sit here today? And there are really four that are, are highest on, on my list. First is the rise of central clearing. I frankly think one of the best elements that came out of Dodd-Frank was reforming the derivatives market. We have greater transparency in derivatives, we have greater standardization in derivatives, but the question is more of that risk is moving to clearinghouses. And many are operating with um, strong risk management and governance, but not all. And so again, incumbent as we're seeing trillions literally moving into clearing, that we look at the risk there. The second is products moving into what some call the unregulated sector, shadow banking, market-based finance, whatever you want to call it. But again, just moving risk from the regulated sector to another part of the market doesn't mean we're eliminating the risk. So how are we managing? Third, which may seem slightly a field, but I think is quite relevant, is the dramatic growth in student lending. It's mm -hmm. now over a trillion dollars, up 4x since 2004. We're adding 100 billion a year um, that's government financed. And one of the key problems is there's a presumption that you cannot default on your student loans in this country because the government can garnish social security. And so we're seeing a huge volume of origination which looks very similar to Fannie Freddie. <coughs> and we're seeing the early signs of that, which then leads to the last one, um, Fannie Freddie. When Hank Paulson, Secretary Paulson, talked about the move to conservatorship, he was very clear to describe it as a timeout. It was a timeout to come out with a better structure. And yes, there are proposals now, but they're still not done. The devil's in the details. And resolving or coming up with that, that final state for our housing market, I think, is also important. So I would add those to the list. I think the work that the center led has been key in conjunction with what the Federal Reserve has done and what Basel has done to meaningfully transform our industry. And now we need to start focusing on what's next. Thanks, Ruth.